now let's see about multi level feedback queue scheduling algorithm uh, we have several scheduling algorithms like fcfs sjf round robin priority scheduling likewise there are several scheduling algorithms are there in every scheduling algorithm we use just only one ready queue whereas a multi level feedback queue scheduling algorithm partitions the ready queue into multiple ready queues so that means here instead of single ready queue here we have multiple ready queues are available uh, let's see this diagram here we have three ready queues so this is nothing but ready queue q0 and this queue is nothing but ready queue q1 and this queue is nothing but ready queue q2 uh, here uh, the processes in q0 and q1 are executed with the help of round robin scheduling algorithm whereas the processes in q2 are executed with the help of fcfs algorithm we know that we use just ready queue for storing the processes Uh, here why we use as round robin algorithm for these two queues is round robin algorithm produces the output in a faster manner it produces the response in a faster manner it will takes less time in order to produce the response whereas fcfs will takes more time in order to produce the response here the last ready queue is nothing but low priority processes whereas the top queues are nothing but high priority processes so that's why for the high priority processes we use as round robin scheduling algorithm whereas for the low priority processes we use as fcfs scheduling algorithm next uh, for ready queue q not processes a time quantum of 8 milliseconds is allocated uh, whereas uh, for ready queue one processes a time quantum of 16 milliseconds is allocated uh, now let's see the procedure here first cpu executes all the processes in ready queue q0 once all the processes in q0 are over then cpu starts executing the processes in ready queue q1 so we so cpu executes the processes in q1 only when the q0 ready queue is empty so once all the processes in q1 execution is over then cpu starts executing the processes in q q2 ready queue so cpu execute a process in q2 only when q0 ready queue as well as q1 ready queue is empty whenever a process comes in then first that process will be placed in ready queue q0 so for that purpose we are using this arrow whenever a new process comes in then the corresponding process is placed in ready queue q0 here we are using round robin scheduling algorithm so cpu executes that process only for a particular time slice period of 8 milliseconds suppose if that process time slice period is less than 8 milliseconds then there is no problem that process execution may be over so cpu produces the output or assumes that that process is waiting for some io operation after 8 milliseconds the time is over assumes that that process is waiting for some io operation so now that process will be moved to the some waiting queue or some io queue whereas if that process time period bars to time is greater than 8 milliseconds then that process will be moved to the ready queue q1 so when that process will be moved to the ready queue q1 when that process bars to time is greater than 8 milliseconds then that process will be moved to the ready queue q1 let us assume that here in this ready queue q0 there are five processes are there where four processes bars to time is less than 8 milliseconds one process bars to time is greater than 8 milliseconds so now that one process whose bars to time is greater than 8 milliseconds that process should be moved to the ready queue q1 so this is the advantage of multi level feedback queue scheduling the processes can be moved between ready queues multiple queues here we are moving a process from ready queue q0 to the q1 so once all the processes in q0 execution is over then cpu starts executing the processes in q1 okay so here a time quantum of 16 milliseconds is given 
so cpu executes that process for 16 milliseconds if that particular process time slice period is less than 16 milliseconds then there is no problem cpu produces the corresponding output or if that process is waiting for some io operation then that process will be moved to the ready queue i'm sorry that process will be moved to the waiting queue or some io queue whereas if that process period time slice period or burst time is greater than 16 milliseconds then that process will be moved from ready queue q1 to the ready queue q2 now the corresponding process will be executed in fcfs manner so here a high priority is given to the processes whose burst time is less than 8 milliseconds why because if the process burst time is 5 milliseconds then directly cpu produces the output there is no need to move to the uh, remaining queues the next level queues okay whereas if the process burst time is less than less than or equal to 16 milliseconds then also there is no problem we will get the process output in a faster manner whereas if that process burst time is very very high let that process burst time is some 200 milliseconds so that means it is a cpu bone process cpu bone process means the pro this process is using more cpu time so if the process is using more cpu time then the corresponding process will be moved to the lower priority process whereas if the process is an io bone process io bone process means cpu is less okay so then uh, we will get the output in a faster manner so io bone process means assumes that the process burst to time is 5 milliseconds it is a io bone process whose cpu burst to time is 5 milliseconds so we, we can get the output in a faster manner so here the point is for cpu bone process we need to have uh, more amount of time in order to produce the output whereas if it is an io bone process then cpu produces the output in a faster manner okay and one more important point here is assumes that uh, a set of processes are waiting in a low priority queue for a long amount of time then the corresponding process will be moved from this uh, low priority to q2 higher priority q also so in that way we can overcome the starvation problem we know what is starvation starvation means uh, assumes that cpu is executing only high priority processes for a long amount of time so in that occasion low priority queues low low priority queue processes needs to wait for a long amount of time instead of that what we can do uh, if a process is waiting in a low priority queue for a long amount of time then that process will be moved to its high priority queue so in that way we can uh, avoid the starvation also so this is about multi-level feedback queue scheduling so why here we name it, we use the term feedback is why because here we can move the process from one queue to the another ready queue we can move the process from one ready queue to the another ready queue so this is the advantage of uh, multi-level feedback queue scheduling